Reading with your kids. Hola, Niha, Konnichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Muni Muli Wanji, Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so very delighted and so very honored that you're joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Amazon Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Jody Meltzer. She is here to celebrate her beautiful book, Good night, star, whoever you are. Before Jody joins us in the studio, we want to let you know that Good Night Star, Whoever You Are, by our guest Jody Meltzer, is our latest Reading With Your Kids certified great read. This is an absolutely heartwarming read. We love Good Night Star, Whoever You Are. The illustrations are, are really fun. This is absolutely one of those books that we would encourage you to take a picture walk through, cover the words, and then look at the pictures and talk to your kids about what you think the story might be about. And then once you and your kids start to read and experience this story together, man, it is going to bring a smile to your face and a smile to your heart. It's a beautiful, beautiful book reminding anyone suffering from a loss that the people that we love are still with us. They're just looking down on us, making sure that we're okay. We really love Good Night Star, whoever you are. It's our latest Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read. You can read our full review on our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Congratulations to Jody Meltzer. Good Night Star, whoever you are, is our latest Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read. Join us right now from right outside of Tampa and the beautiful sunshine state of Florida. Our guest today is returning to the show to celebrate her beautiful book, which is a Reading With Your Kids certified great read. It's called Goodnight Star, Whoever You Are. Please welcome back to the show, Jody Meltzer. Hey, Jody, how are you? So great to be back. Thanks for having me. I'm really happy to have you back. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, read and review Good Night Star, whoever you are, uh, early on before it was published. And I loved it. Thank you so much. And I appreciate you doing that, reading it pre-publication. I always like to get important, you know, important people who understand the need for kid lit and children's books to review prior to publication to get feedback, and I appreciate yours. Well, wow, we're, we're really happy to provide that. I'm excited to, to have you tell everybody all about this book. It really was moving to me. I, I really enjoyed it. Yes, yeah, so this book tackles a subject I feel that we do not do a good job of discussing as a society, and that's childhood grief. Unfortunately, my children, I have one bonus daughter and a biological son, and both of them have dealt with unspeakable grief um, at different periods in their life. So I became a mom in a way that was not anticipated, I guess, for being in my 30s, where the proverbial stork dropped this little eight-year-old girl on my lap who had lost her mom when she was four years old. So I had the experience of raising her and both of them obviously shared a father and he died in 2018. Um, So my bonus daughter was 21 and my son was eight years old. Mm. They both experienced, you know, obviously the loss of a parent. And I just feel collectively We struggle with grief, even though it's a universal condition. We're all going to experience it at some point. Um, But everyone kind of freezes up and is nervous about discussing grief and the toll it takes on us. Um, And that is especially true when it comes to children. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to write this. You know, you're right. I am, you know, looking back on my childhood and um, 
you know, there were certainly times people that I lost that it wasn't acknowledged. I, I didn't attend my first wake or funeral until I was 16. It was my grandfather. Uh, but there was uh, a kid in the neighborhood who drowned at four years old, and I was maybe uh, seven or eight years old, and the parents just wouldn't talk about it. And another neighbor who took his own life, again, I was maybe nine or ten years old, and it was just, you know, like, yeah, it happened, stop talking about it, move on. And, uh, you know, I think we've probably gotten a little bit better since then, but not a whole lot. Um, parents yeah, just want to protect their kids. To a, to a degree, but frankly, I was surprised. You know, my son attended a, a great school system in our last school district. We just moved mm -hmm. to the Tampa area. But even, even in that school system, you know, he was out of school for more than a week after his father passed away, and understandably so. But I came to find out, because my son was upset when he came home the first day he returned from school, that no one acknowledged the fact that his dad died. And I came to find out the reason why was because they had a special meeting with the children and instructed them to ignore the fact that Alex, my son, went through this trauma, to not bring it up. And they gave them that directive. So, of course, the children did not acknowledge that he went through this profound loss. And for someone like my son, who is, I think, more communicative, everyone has their own grief journey, he's a little bit more uh, forthcoming about it than my daughter was, certainly mm -hmm. at his age. Um, but for him, it was almost mind-numbing to go back to school and not have anyone say, hey, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about your dad. But they were given that directive. So even though we are all kind of judged, uh, you know, we're too PC, we're too evolved, you know, we're not hard enough on kids at times with certain subject matter, uh, at least, you know, some portions of society feel that way. Certainly, you know, that was shocking to me that even in this evolved society, they just simply ignored the fact that he had this incredible loss uh, he had, was enduring and they just ignored it. And uh, that must have been a horrible experience for your son to, you know, to have that loss and then to go back to the, these, this group of, of kids that you consider your friends, your teachers that you've, think care about you and no one mentions it as if yeah I mean I care. think that a, a few teachers uh, attended the funeral which was beautiful gesture I mean they didn't even announce that they were going to be there and they did but it was just that collective I think feeling of being uncomfortable to talk about grief and maybe wanting to protect the kids in the class, like, hey, you don't have to mention this to Alex. It might make him uncomfortable. Uh, but they didn't ask me. You know, they mm -hmm. didn't say, hey, Mom, what do you think? Do you think Alex would want to to have it addressed? Do you think that we can provide a supportive environment where we acknowledge this loss? It was just something that they decided to do. And for him, for this specific child, it was the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. But... It made me think, too, that even even when I see, you know, people lose uh, a loved one and they write about it on Facebook, a lot of the comments or social media, mm -hmm. a lot of the comments are just generic because people are uncomfortable talking about grief and loss. You know, I hope I hope his or her memory is a blessing. I mean, if I see that one more time, <laughs> I know my, my head will explode, but I think generally speaking, as adults and as children, this is just an uncomfortable topic. But these kids exist, especially now. Mm -hmm. More than 40, 43,000 kids, and this was a statistic from months ago, lost, have lost a parent um, due to coronavirus. And that's you know a 20% increase in parental loss from the year prior. Wow. So that, that's just talking about the specific pandemic and what it's leaving in its wake. It's obviously, we've all been touched by it. I think we're all collectively going through grief and loss and mourning of obviously the way our lives used to be. 
but there's a real like a real wake here that we have to deal with where these children are losing parents and it's it's changing family structure it's changing um you know kind of the services and support that they need and they need that validation that hey you're not alone um a lot of my a lot of that the reason why i decided to write this book too is that both of my kids have felt isolated in grief mm-hmm. at different periods of their life you know it's something that even though like i say it's a universal truth we're all going to endure it at some point it is a little bit um more atypical typically to deal with grief as a child especially when you're talking about a parent or a sibling mm-hmm. but it certainly exists and we need to talk about it more yeah we really do um where do you think that that re- hesitancy to talk about grief comes from I think it's a lot of well-meaning people who simply don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. That's been my experience. Even, you know, I lost my mom when I was 40. I mean, I look at it now in retrospect, and I'm so grateful that I had all of those years with her, even though she was only 64 when she passed away. If I look at it in comparison to my son, who only had eight years with his dad, I obviously am more grateful for that time because I see the impact of losing a parent at age eight and, you know, what that entails. So everything is, you know, about perspective, but I even know people who were close to me and I'm a grown adult trying to talk to me after my mother passed away and knowing how broken that left me. And, and, you know, it was just gut wrenching but they just had a hard time relating and it's become because of their well-meaning then they just simply don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. And I think that my message is there's no right thing to say, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) There just isn't, but you don't want to ignore it. You don't want to pacify it. You don't want to sugarcoat it. It's, it's very tough to deal with, but kind of taking that road where, well, I don't know what to say. So I'm just going to kind of fade to the background for a little bit of time. So, you know, she gets through this initial shock and, you know, goes through these stages and pull away. That's the worst thing that you can do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I know people don't like to feel vulnerable and they don't like being in situations where they're uncomfortable and they don't know what to say. But sometimes that's the best thing. Just sit down next to your friend and say, I'm I'm so sorry, or as we say here in Boston, I'm wicked sorry. I don't know what mm-hmm. to say. I'm just going to sit here next to you. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. Because there is no perfect thing to say. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to go through this unspeakable loss. You're going to have to miss, you know, the daily conversations, the birthday celebrations, the holidays, you know, all these you know, kind of rites of passage that you may take for granted when someone's alive, you're going to have to go through that mourning and readjust as a person to a new normal as best you can. But you don't want to add layers of complexity to adjusting to that new normal by people excusing themselves from your life because they feel uncomfortable. And I think that often happens. Yeah. So getting back to the the book specifically, I... Love it. Tell us a, a little bit about the the, the story and, and the the imagery that that whole good night star, whoever you are. Yes. So the story was actually based on a true story, like a phenomenon. I would say that I experienced with both of my kids more than a decade apart, and that is, you know, driving in a car on the way home from with my son. It was the beach, and looking out. The, the window like we all do and that feeling like a star is following you and a child uh, certainly with imaginative point of view both of my children at different stages in their life always envisioned that the star was their deceased parent following them and checking up on them and it really like I vividly remember uh, my daughter saying that about her mom when she was younger and I it always you know, got me, you know, got me a little of a clump, but I was blown away independently when my son said the same thing. And I said, you know what? Other children must feel this way who've experienced loss, that 
that connectivity. They're, they're seeking that connectivity that they must feel that way too. And I want to validate that, Mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe that, that special star is meant just for you. And it is a loved one checking up on you and you do that connection, that love that you always had here doesn't go away just because they die. Mm -hmm. And this, that's that feeling of, you know, I want to help children, first of all, like I said, validate them that they're not the only child in the world, even though they can feel that way sometimes. They're not the only one who experienced this type of loss. And that feeling, you know, that connection is is something that you can take with you every single day of your life. And it may find you in unexpected places. And for my children, it was the car. So I wrote about that. Yeah. I think that that's a really valuable thing to remind our kids that the love that they had for a parent, a grandparent, a friend, it, or even a pet, or even a pet, it it can continue to live on in your heart. It can continue to bring that those feelings of comfort and joy when you think back and and remember your friend, your friendship, and your love. Yes, you know, good night, star, whoever you are. It's really does a good job, I think, of, you know, sparking meaningful conversations about the everlasting power of love. Mm -hmm. Love is something that is eternal. So whether or not, you know, someone is here every single day to show you that love or not, if you, if you feel that love and that connection, it does not, it does not go away. It's, It's something that you will always have. I I remember when I was reading Goodnight Star, Whoever You Are, and it it brought me back to my daughter when my mom passed away. And my mom uh, battled Parkinson's and severe dementia for many years. And when, um, and she was very close with my daughter. My daughter was in high school when she passed. And when she did pass, uh, I was sitting down with, with my daughter and she just turned to me and she said, well, at least now I can talk to Grammy because mm-hmm. she's in heaven and she can hear me. She couldn't hear me when she was here, but now she can. Yes, absolutely. You know, and I'm so fortunate that um, multi-platinum artist and songwriter Andy Grammer provided a really moving forward for Goodnight Star, whoever you are. And he talks about that in his forward, how he will just talk about, talk to his mother, his beloved mom who he lost. Um, And he encourages also his daughter to do the same, to just talk openly and she hears. Yeah. So that's something. And he he also talks about how he does special things uh, like baking a cake in her honor because it's something that she always loved, you know, special ways that you can keep the memory alive. Yeah. You know, this is I think I think this book is obviously it's for kids who've experienced any type of loss, whether it be a parent or a grandparent or a sibling or a pet. But it's also I think to just it, it's about the everlasting power of eternal love. I think that all kids can relate to it and it certainly can help them better understand too that universal connection. Yeah. And what it may be like for a classmate or a friend who lost their dog last week or, you know, have experienced some sort of um, trauma or grief. Yeah. You just brought up a really, really important point. And, you know, those kids in your son's class who were told, you know, don't, don't, don't bring this up. He's, it'll, it'll make him upset. No one, it sounds like no one sat down with them. And had a conversation because I know when your your son's classmates heard that that his dad died, a lot of them freaked out, thinking, "Oh my goodness, this could happen to me." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, and that's not to say he absolutely had friends who wrote him really sweet mm-hmm. cards, you know, independently sent them to the house. Uh, he had some really thoughtful gestures come his way, of course. But it was that lack of acknowledgement collectively 
the determination, you know, from higher ups to say, hey, kids, we're all going to sit down and talk about Alex and the fact that he lost his dad and that we're not going to talk about it. That just struck me as, wow, we really need to do a better job here. You know, he this is this is not the way to address Mm -hmm. this loss, especially for this child. And the conversation should have been had with me. Hey, what do you think? This is how we're going to approach this issue. What do you think? How is that the best way to support your child? And I would have said no. Mm-hmm. And I, he also had another experience in school where you know a kid made a really nasty comment about him not having a father. And I think that is something because kids are again just uncomfortable and sometimes obviously very insensitive with comments. But we just all collectively need to be enlightened about this topic specifically. And I think that it's with kids and also adults that we are all going to experience it. Let's do better. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I'm imagining there are some people here who hear your story and that you, uh, you know, you lost your mom when, when you were 40. You lost your husband. That's an, an incredibly difficult place for anybody to find themselves. What gave you the strength to carry on and, and uh, live life after those losses? Well, I will say he was my he was my ex husband, oh. but still devastating loss. I mean, the father of my kids and going through that was incredibly difficult because it's just unexpected, and it's not anything I would wish on anybody to have to endure, uh, certainly loss in any way, but you know, he had a real grueling fight with kidney cancer. So going through that whole process was exceptionally difficult with my kids, Mm -hmm. even though, you know, one was young and one was older. It's just, it's just how devastating it is to watch them go through that. And certainly I, also was really upset about it. I mean, it's it's just the worst thing in the world to see your child and have a skin knee. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> regard. I mean, you're talking about that. I could sit there and go back to thinking about what it was like to drop my son off at preschool and how I would stalk him in the parking lot, worried because he was crying with me leaving him. And then you you fast forward, and you know, I said this morning. You know, my son actually said this morning, rather, you know, mom, I'm going through puberty and pretty soon I'm going to have to learn how to shave and no one's here to teach me how to do that. You know, grief walks alongside him every single day. I mean, he had a class assignment the other day where they, you had to give a numeric value for the people in your house. And he said, you know, sibling one, mom one, dad zero, things like that just they break my heart on a daily basis. I would do anything to take this pain away, this isolation away from him. And as a mom and as a writer, this is my attempt to do that, to validate the feelings, to show him that, you know, you know love is, is eternal and there's always going to be a connection um, and you're not alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So important. So put that that just knowing that you're going through this 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 terrible moment in life, but you you have support, you have friends, you have loved ones, and the person that you are missing is still going to be watching over you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and there's actually a really special page at the end of the book. It's called an I Remember page, so children can write memories or if they are they can't write yet obviously their parent or caregiver whomever they're with they can help them write down some things they remember about their pet or grandparent or parent um just so they keep it as a keepsake you know at this moment in time because as someone who's as we articulated i've dealt with grief uh personally you know memories aren't always as sharp as the years go on. And that's especially true with younger kids. Um, so capturing that at the end of the book, I think is important. Yeah. And uh, just as you were speaking, you know, we we're talking about the fact that Goodnight Star, whoever you are, 
is not only a book to read at the moment of grief, but it's a, a wonderful book just to have that conversation, to start talking with with kids about th- this fact of life that that sometimes people are gonna are going to leave us. And I was thinking, you know, for a, a mom or a dad to sit down and and to get to that last page and then just take out a sheet of paper and write down some memories of people that they lost, their mm-hmm. mom, their grandmother, and just model for kids the way to remember, the way to deal with that grief, that it's it's hard, but we can get through it. And, uh, and what... How cool would it be for you to set up a situation where at the end of reading Goodnight Star, whoever you are, you enabled your child to help you through a moment of grief? Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, of course, in the book, they can write, you know, the child can have it and it becomes a keepsake. Mm -hmm. But that exercise that you're describing is something that we should all do because we don't we think we're going to have all these vivid memories Uh, and, but at least from my perspective, I, my mom's been gone now, um, since 2013. And there are so many times during my day where I'll say, I wonder, did she like, did she love that song or was that song out when she was alive? And I have to sit there and kind of retrack and refocus like, you know, no, it wasn't out, but she would love that song, you know, so I always have to kind of think about it because it's not that her memory ever fades. I mean, she is a constant in my life. I think about her every single day, no fail. And I don't think that will ever change because she was my absolute best friend in the world. But, you know, some of the memories of the specifics do get a little fuzzy you know, as time passes. Mm -hmm. And I I do believe that's especially true for kids who, you know, are growing and changing and they have so much uh, coming at them every single day that memories, and sometimes it's self-preservation too, you know, where you, Mm -hmm. your, your mind may work a certain way where you're trying to, you're trying to zone out some of these memories, but they don't, they're not as sharp. So we can't, we have to remember that it's important to track some of this stuff Mm -hmm. because as you get older, you may want to remember. Yeah. You know, you brought up your mom in a song. It reminded me of my mom when, when I was a teenager, she wanted, she loved Johnny Mathis and he was playing a concert at, at, at Boston Common and we had tickets for way, way, way in the back. And at one point I said to my mom, do you want to sneak up front and get clo- you know, closer to the stage? And she said, can we do that? I go, yeah. And she took off running down the aisle like she was a 17 year old girl. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, Jody, tell everybody where they can go to find out more about Goodnight Star, whoever you are, and find out more about you. So you can visit jodymeltzer.com, J-O-D-I-M-E-L-T-Z-E-R.com. And the book is available wherever books are sold online, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million. Take your pick and please pre-order. It's actually available for pre-order until October 26th and out October 26th. We've had a wonderful time speaking with the author of Goodnight Star, Whoever You Are, a beautiful book by our guest, Jody Meltzer. Hey, Jody, thanks so much for being back with us. Thank you. Always happy to be back. I appreciate it. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Kay Ibora. She'll be here to celebrate her middle grade novel, When the World Turned Upside Down. Want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we want to thank our guest, our certified great read author, Jody Meltzer. Be sure to check out Goodnight Star, whoever you are. Also want to thank my team, Alejandro Doherty, Fatima Khan, Michael Murphy, Rory Grady. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. We all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always... Thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.